Hi, George here with another Photoshop Elements photo project. This one can be done by beginners. It's not that difficult. And we're basically taking a couple of items here, taking the girl and also that deer in the background and adding those into a photo of a winter scene. We'll also be adding in that light streak that's in behind there. Again, all straightforward stuff, pretty easy to do. This is actually taken from an older video I did for Photoshop about four years ago. And I'm now updating it here for Photoshop Elements. And you can see our layers over here, right-hand side. Here's our background layer right in there. See there, we can just get that out of the way. There it is, background layer. And we have our light streaks right here. Above that, we have the deer on a separate layer right there. And of course, the girl's on her own layer as well. So pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do this one. Now we'll be downloading all of these images from Pixabay, my favorite download site. But before we get to that, I just want to remind you that my channel here is completely 100% fan supported. And there are three different ways you can support this channel. The easiest way, of course, is to hit that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, then please hit that subscribe button. You can also support the channel and support this video directly. If, if you learned something from this video, then why don't you consider sending a thanks for that. There's a button for thanks right down below the bottom right hand corner of the window. And you can also help support my channel and keep these videos coming by taking a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's switch over to Pixabay and get these images. And here we are on my favorite site for downloading images from the web. It's called Pixabay. And the images are all free, royalty free. And you can use them any way you want to. And I'll start over here with this background image. Now I have a free account here on Pixabay. The accounts are free. It just makes it a little bit easier to download the images. If you don't have an account, then you'll just get one of those capture windows will pop up there. You have to match a couple of pictures. That's all there is. But the account's free, so there's no reason not to get one. Let's go ahead and download this. And I'll be downloading these all in the 1920 by whatever it happens to be for the picture size. I always go for that 1920 size. I'll be working in the default Photoshop Elements size, which is six by four, and this is just about the right size for that. So choose download. And I'll save this here into a file folder that I set up called Projects. It's just kind of a temporary holding space for images like this, real easy. Choose Save. That one's done. Let's now move on to the next image right here. Same thing, click on Free Download. Look for that 1920. There we are, and we'll save this one, same location. And then our final image right here is that deer. Same thing, Free Download, same size. Look for the 1920 and Download. And there we go. Okay, that's our three images here from Pixel Base, we go ahead and close this window down. We're all done with that. And we're back here inside of Photoshop Elements. I'm just going to close this window down. We don't need this any longer. Just close that. There it is. And we'll start off with a brand new file. File, new. And you want a blank file. And I'll be using the default Photoshop Elements size right there. Again, 6x4, resolution of 300. Choose OK. Now mine comes in as a floating window. You don't have to have that for this project if you don't want to. And I'll use the control zero keyboard shortcut to maximize our window. There we go. Now, if you want floating documents, I find it very convenient. Go up to the edit menu, come down to preferences and general. And it's that checkbox right there, allow floating documents in expert mode. Just make sure that's checked. You can then have floating documents. Okay, let's now open up our images. Do our background first. So file and open. And I'm in the project folder. Let's go for that background image right here. Choose open. There we go. And these all come in as a floating window for me. Again, it doesn't matter. You don't have to do this. I'll just dock this up like that. Go over to your main image here, our working file, and then come down to the photo bin and simply take that image and drag it up like this. Go then drop that in place. Now, if it doesn't come in the exact right size, notice here it's just a little bit too small on the ratio. Just grab a corner and pull it out. And same thing with the bottom corner down there until it's just big enough to totally fit into that area. Okay, there's our background image. Let's now bring in the next picture, and I can close this one down while we're at it. There we go. File and open. And we'll do the deer next. And same thing, let's just say it came in as a tab. Make sure you're on your main project window, photo bin, and then just drag that up here and drop it in. And don't worry about anything right now on this one. You can even just hide that if you want to. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. And then our final image, file, open. And that's the girl's picture right here. And same thing if it comes in as a tab. Just go over here to your working image, grab that picture, drag it up, and drop it in. And there we go. And we can hide that as well. Now, over here on the right-hand side on our layers, I want to have the girl's picture on the top and the deer in between and the background in the bottom. So that's the right sequence for that. Okay, let's now switch to the tool options over here. We'll be using these quite a bit in this project. 
And at this point, since we brought our pictures in here, it's a good time to do a save on this. It's also a smart thing to do saves while you're working. Do several saves as you work so you don't miss anything. You don't accidentally make a mistake and then lose whole, your whole file. So we'll be doing a save right now. Go over here to File, and we'll do a save. It should go back into the same folder, and it does. And let's call this a winter scene. It comes in as a Photoshop or Photoshop Elements file, PSD file format, choose save. That saves everything, including all of your layers. Over here, right hand side, the layers, there's like these all have this little kind of funny icon right down there, bottom right hand corner. That means that these were brought in here as smart object layers. And that's okay because I want to have copies of all of these layers anyway, just in case we make mistakes. So let's go ahead and make our duplicates right now. Let's click on the bottom one here, right click on the name and duplicate layer. Choose OK. Let's hide that background. Let's do the same thing here for our next one. That's this deer layer. Right click, duplicate layer, choose OK. Hide the first one. And for the girl up here, I'll just show that picture. Right click and duplicate layer, choose OK, and then hide that one. So we now have all of these as duplicates. Now I don't want to have these as smart object layers. We'll be doing some stuff in here on those images. So I want to have these converted to regular layers. And that's easy to do. Just right click on the name of the layer and come down here to simplify layer and do that for all the ones that are showing right click and simplify and at the very top up here right click and simplify we're not going to simplify the originals i keep those in here just as project safeties in case i mess things up i can always come back to those layers so now hide the girl hide the deer and there's one thing i want to do on this particular layer and that's to darken the corners down a little bit doing a little bit of a vignette in here Easy to do. Go up to the filter menu, come down to correct camera distortion. And in here, you see here's a vignette section. And you can take this and actually darken that down by pulling this to the left hand side. You see, it just gives us a little bit of a darkening on the outsides there, outsides and corners. Just bring it down just a little bit. I would say maybe about negative 20 is pretty good. Just a little bit of darkening. Here is without, and there is with. And that just helps you focus your attention in towards the middle of the picture. And choose OK. It's a subtle little effect, but I think it looks really good here. Let's now show the deer. It's the top of our two deer layers in here. And make sure you're on that layer. Now we need to remove the background from this image. And for that, we need to make a selection around the deer. And then use that selection to make a layer mask. Now if you have a later version of Photoshop Elements, this should be easy to do. Go up to the Select menu, come down to Subject, and let Photoshop Elements do the whole thing for you. Right there, it messed up a little bit right up in here. Need a little bit of cleanup in there, kind of messed up right down here. So not really perfect this time, but pretty close. But we're going to go ahead and do this the old-fashioned manual way. So I'll just click into this, grab the Zoom tool here, and I'll click in just about that tight. That's good enough. Now, if you hold the space bar down, you can move the image around. And whenever you see that hand icon, it means I'm holding down the space bar. Now, what I want to do here is make a selection around this. It's pretty easy. I'm just going to go over here and let's just grab the regular lasso tool. Make sure we're on the new selection right here. And then just make a selection just outside. Doesn't need to be perfect. It's kind of it's like that. Hold the space bar down to move your image around. And let's just continue on down right around this deer here. Again, hold the space bar down and move that around go all the way down to the bottom and then right across the grass down here. We'll take the deer down below that level, of course. And then same thing going up this side. And it's right around. Notice I'm not really being really accurate with this. I'm just staying kind of close, but not really super close. And that's all we need to do on this. We'll be using the refined edge to improve this edge and get it in against the deer, which makes us an easy way to do your selections. And let's just go around and grab the last bits of the horns in here. There we go, around that piece, up around this side, and back over to the beginning, just cross over the beginning. There's our basic selection. Okay, I'll hold the space bar down, let's move this up. And I want to remove this bit in between the legs. So I'll come down here and click on the subtract button. That's that one right here. And then back up to our picture. And then just do a little selection right inside the part that you want to subtract. And it's right like this. And try not to cross over your own selection right there. And back around. 
There we go, that's one. Get it right inside of here. We also could do this afterwards, make our layer mask first and then do this step afterwards, but I'll try to get it all in one step here and make it just a little bit faster and easier for us. We'll have to do a little bit of cleanup on the layer mask. You always have to. Okay, there's our selection. I use the control zero keyboard shortcut to fit to screen. So it looks just like that. You can now refine edge. And here's our refine edge tool. If you want to zoom back in again, the zoom tool is right there. I want to zoom in just a little bit like that. You want to be using this tool right here. Now it's a little bit of a complicated image. So I'm going to set my radius here at one pixel, which helps a little bit to grab that edge. And I'll set my contrast here about halfway in, just like that. And the brush size is a bit too large for this. I like having it about twice the size of the space I'm trying to cover. So this is about three times the size. So I'll bring this down to maybe 25. That's a lot better. Okay, and now I'm using the red overlay here and that's this overlay right there. It's just easiest for me to see that. It's really easy to spot where we're at. Most images don't have bright red in them. So this is a really easy one to use. Okay. Now just come in and then just brush right along that edge. I like putting the plus sign on the part I want to get rid of. That seems to work out best for me. And then overlap your brush size right into the deer. And then Photoshop Elements goes in and re-examines that edge. And it should be giving us a cleaner edge. Now it's going to take some fixing in here that's not perfect. Let's come back to that. That's good. There's always some spots I need fixing. Pull the space bar down and let's come down here and we'll clear around the whole deer here. And I do this in just little strokes like this, just little short segments. And sometimes this works great, sometimes it doesn't. It all depends upon the image, it depends upon the background. Whether you get lucky or not, we can always fix these things. Okay, it's really not to me any good in there at all. So I'm not even going to bother with any more of that. We'll just leave it as is on that part. Looks okay over here though. I think we're gonna be okay on this leg. Nope, that didn't work. So we'll fix this after the fact, after we get our layer mask made. And we'll finish work on the outside section. And again, sometimes this is fast and easy. Sometimes it takes more cleanup. It depends upon your image and upon the background. And kind of it depends upon what mood Photoshop Elements is in this particular day. You really should have grabbed those just fine and it didn't because there's good contrast down there. That happens, that is the way computers work sometimes. And we'll just continue on around here and do the best job we can on this. And then just save that for some real easy cleanup. And then just clear around, check all those edges. And there are a few different ways to clean up these edges. I'll show you a couple of different ways in here. And we may need different techniques for different spots around the deer depending upon what the specific problem is on that. And right across over here. Now sometimes it'll come back and actually see it fix areas that you left that weren't as good. Like right there, just fix that even though I was working over here. So it may go back and clean up your edges elsewhere. So by the time we finish, the edge could be improved from where it was just a few moments ago. And that's fine, that helps us out a little bit, a little less work that way. And let's just work around and finish this off. Right down this last little bit of antler right down here. And that's about as good as it's going to get here for us. It's just not going to really do that for me at all in this section here. Okay, so there's our basic deer. Now come down to output. I want to output this to a layer mask right here. This is what the layer mask on our existing layer. Now if I didn't have a backup layer, I may come down here to the new layer with layer mask. This also gives you a backup layer. But we don't need that. We already have our backup. So we'll just do layer mask, choose OK. And now we see that background in behind. Now, luckily the background is very confusing, so not really seeing a lot of those problems, but I know they're there, so I want to fix that. So let's hide the background copy, and you can now really see those areas that are a bit of a problem in here. So we've got our layer mask over here. If you double click and go to that layer mask side, look at that light blue outline. And we'll try the first technique in here, the first cleaning technique, and that's over on this tool right here. You want the burn tool down here. And I want to burn the shadows. I'm actually making the dark part of the layer mask, we have white and black, making the dark part darker. Exposure at 50%, so it kind of works slowly. You can see there's the brush. And now you can brush in here to the layer mask, and if the area is just a little thin, then it's gonna 
harden that up, and that can get rid of a lot of those little problem areas. And you see it does a pretty good job at doing this. There we go. So we're just going to work our way in. And this may be all we need for a lot of this. Now, it's not going to do it right here for us. This is going to be a little bit problem right in there. But I'll do this around the rest of the edge of the deer here, just get what we can. This will fix a lot of it. And then space bar and we'll check our edges. They're actually okay. I think we're fine along in here. It looks fine up in here. Again, just stiffening up that edge. In round down the sides in here, and those look pretty good. And there's a big problem right down here, of course. I don't care about the feet. We're putting the feet off screen. All right, so that was that step. Now, it's still bad up in here, so what I want to do now is just actually paint this out. And for that, make sure you're on the layer mask side still. Let's zoom in on this. And I'll grab the polygonal lasso tool, and I'll make a lasso right around that edge. And right around the edge of the deer. Just like I was going to be doing a manual layer mask selection for the whole deer, this is the most accurate way to do that. And oftentimes I'll do this for the whole image before I make my layer mask. But for this image, it doesn't really need to be this careful. Okay, back up around and back to the beginning point. And now black hides, go to our paintbrush, changes to a black color right here. And then just paint in like that. We can actually paint that right out. Now we had a feathering set at one. That feathering is still going to be on here, which will help us a little bit. And then Control D to deselect. Okay, that's fine. And we can do this for the whole deer. Now, if you want to get rid of this kind of a dark edge in here, let's just paint that out. You can come in with a brush and carefully just brush into it and just paint that out like I'm doing right now. It's kind of a manual way of painting that out. And that is perfectly acceptable. It takes a little while to do this. It's not a real super fast process, but it works great. Or you can try to lighten up that area if you want to. But I think in this case, this will be the best approach is to come in here and actually paint around this edge. Now I want to have this done for the whole deer image because you get a much better edge on this and it gets rid of all those problem areas. So I'm going to pause the video at this point. I'll go in and I'll just paint out the rest of this layer mask to make it perfect. And as soon as that's done, then I'll bring the video right back up again. Okay, just finish going around and cleaning up the edges of that layer mask wherever they needed that. Same technique, just painting on the layer mask with a black paintbrush and then taking out everything that I wanted to fix. Okay, that is now done. Control zero to fit screen. And if I show our background again, there we go. And that deer fits in nicely. Now he's too tall, I want him down here and I want to get this bottom hidden. So right down below the bottom. So someplace over here, we may move him again a little bit later on, but that's about right. I'm going to put him right here. So his back end here is over that white part of that tree and his white parts over that dark part. That just helps to separate him out from the background. So that's actually a pretty good spot for him right in there. Let's now do the exact same thing with the girl. We'll bring her picture up here. That's the top layer on this one. And we'll try that subject select again. Select and subject, see what happens. And that's pretty good. Now this time I'll keep this. So if you were doing this and you didn't have subject select, just take your lasso tool and make a lasso right around this image, go off the bottom of the screen and then back in again and around this side. Same thing. And now switch over here to any of our select tools. We can use the refined edge. And this time the brush size is too small. You can kind of see right here. I'll put this back up to 35 again. I think that's better for this and that's pretty good size. And let's set our edge here at one and contrast about halfway up again. And it's come along and just paint right along that edge. And this really works out well for areas like fur and hair and so forth. That's really where the refined edge shines the most is on this kind of content in here. And that's not going to be getting everything, but we'll do a little cheat on that and fix some of that area. And right down on this side over here. And there we go. And that's all we need here. Now, again, we're going to be taking this out to a layer mask. We already have our duplicate layer, so choose OK. And that looks fine. Let's just move her right over here someplace. Want her about over here. And it's kind of hard to see if I go off the screen here. There are some control handles. I'm not really seeing them right now. So hold the control key down, tap on the T, and that should bring up your transform controls. And we can now see the edges in here. Okay, it's right down here. Here's our bottom corner. I'm going to take this and pull it down a little bit and just make her a bit larger. Just like that. Put her right over here. 
There we go. And hit that green check mark. And that's a good spot for her. We can now resize our deer in the background. I kind of like him where he is. He's back far enough that way. I think I'll leave the deer alone. Now on her layer, we had some interesting things kind of brushing out. Let me just see if I can show that again. This is our dark furs sticking out. We lost all of that because it's dark against a dark background and elements just couldn't see those. But we can bring some of that back in again with a clever trick. Let's go over here to our brush tool and click on the brush sample. And we're in the default brushes and then scroll way down towards the bottom down here. And you see here, we have a single dune grass and we have this triple grass. And we can use these to come in and actually fake that. So I'm gonna choose one of those. You can see the brush right down here. Now come down to brush settings and you have our angle right here. I can actually rotate this around and have the brush show at different angles. That's too far over. That's pretty good for this side right in here. I'm gonna adjust our spacing and scatter. I'm gonna put scatter all the way to, to zero. Then I'm gonna move hue jitter all the way to zero. We just wanna keep this just solid and fade at zero. Roundness at 100%, that looks fine. Close that down. Then I'll bring the brush size up a little bit. That's almost too far, maybe half of that. I'll do a, I'll do a 200 and I think that's pretty good. Now keep in mind, that the girl is on a layer mask. So anything outside of the girl where I want this hair to show is not gonna be showing because of course that's hidden by the layer mask. So what we're gonna be doing is to put a new layer in behind. Let's so click on the layer just beneath her layer, make a new layer right here, and we can paint on this layer. Now if I hide the background, so you can really see this. There you go, you can kind of see that as I come in here now, and I'm just gonna paint in a couple of taps like that, and we can bring back in some of that. Now notice that the brush is moving around a little bit and it's changing size. Undo that one. So just tap one tap at a time and make sure you're tapping out and away. Now that one's a bit too much. I'm just going to back up here. Control Z. Bring that down just a little bit. That's still too much. Bring it down to here. Yes, we're just bringing just a few of those. And again, the brush is coming in randomly and that helps. At this point though, I want to switch sides on that. Let's see. Go further over here and then a little bit like that. So brush automatically randomizes and that helps, okay. And we'll get a few more of these just up. Okay, that was too much, control Z to back out of that. So if it goes down too hard, just use the control Z key to back away from that. And just putting in just a few of those little things that are sticking out there. Okay, there we go. Let's now bring our background back in again. It's real subtle, you can just kind of barely see them, but they are there. And that just adds a bit more realism to the edges of that fur right around in there. Okay, so that's looking good. We can now work on our coloration a little bit in here. I want to have the deer being a bit more contrasty. It's up against some darker areas back there. Looks a little bit light. So let's adjust our contrast on the deer. So that's this layer right here. And for that, we'll be using an adjustment layer. Go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels right there. Where it says use previous layer, check that, choose okay. That limits the effect to just that one layer. In the darkest left-hand side, I can actually pull that in and darken down the darks. So that's already much better by doing that. And the middle is your middle and the right is the whites. I'll leave the middle and the right alone. And we'll just come in here and just play with the darks. So that looks pretty good. And I think right about in here is pretty nice. And that matches that scene better. Okay, so that was good for that. Let's now do the same kind of levels adjustment over here on the girl, make her a little bit better. Back up to the top layer here. And layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels. Same thing, check that checkbox, choose okay. And I want to darken the darks down a little bit, not too much. There's a bit more contrasty in there. And I think about 35, 36 in there somewhere. Looks pretty good. And then it's come to the middle section here. Let's bring up our midtones just a little bit. Maybe like that, about 1.12, just a little bit higher on the midtones. And on the whites, bring our whites back in just a bit. This just increases the contrast. And right around there, 238, that looks pretty good. Okay, so there's a little bit more contrasty on the girl. I think that is fine. Now, last little thing in here. The whole scene is really blue, yet she is, is warmer in tone. So she's not really fitting in that well because she's too warm, too orange or too yellow. We can fix that with a cooling layer. Go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and photo filter. Same thing, check that checkbox, choose okay. 
And I want a cooling filter in here. And the 82 is my personal favorite. I like that coloration. And we can then adjust that until we get just, just the amount of coolness that we want. And I think right around here someplace, right around 30 looks pretty good. There we go. And that bluish tint is on the photo filter layer up here. So I want to tone that down. Go up to the layer mask here for the photo filter. And let's grab our black color here and the black paintbrush, black hides, white shows. So all we have to do is just to come in here and then paint some black onto the layer mask for that photo filter and hide that filter along those outer edges. So we'll leave it in the middle section and we're hiding it around the outside. And that gets rid of that kind of blue fringe that we're getting out there. And there we go. That's all we have to do on that one. That looks fine. And the last little thing I want to do is I want to put in a light streak in the background in here. And that's going to be down here with our background layer. We'll do this in front of the background layer. So I'll make a new layer right here, layer two. And let's just set this for white in the foreground. That's good. And I'll go up here and grab the polygonal lasso tool. You can see here it's kind of a white spot right here. Let me just change those so you can see that a bit better. There we go. Kind of white spot in here. There's some light hitting this area. There's some light hitting it up in here. There's some light hitting it up in here. We're going to mimic that and strengthen that effect of a light streak being in there. Okay, polygonal lasso tool. Come up here, upper right hand corner. Come just outside and click. And let's pull that down. And I'll put it to the top of this light area right here. And just clear across like that, clear outside. Come down a little ways, about like to here. And let's go back up and then a little bit shorter like that. So I have a bit of a streak happening and then back to the beginning and just make this kind of a shape right in here. Let's now fill this with white. Grab the paint bucket and then just click into there. There's our white. Control D to deselect. Now I want to blend that into the background. So for that, go up here to the blend modes, normal, come down to overlay right here. The other option would be soft light, but I'm gonna go for the overlay, the stronger one in here. There we go. And I want to soften down those edges. So go up here to the filter menu, come down to blur and the Gaussian blur. And as you increase your blur, it blurs or softens down those edges, kind of spreads them out a little bit. And that looks pretty good right in there. And it's too strong still. So let's just bring our opacity down on this. Lower the opacity down a bit. And right about there, that looks pretty natural. Just a little bit of a light streak coming through there and brightening up that part. So we've added that light streak on that. That also helps to show up some of those additional furs we tossed in here around that fur hood. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, why don't you send me a thanks? Just click on the thanks button down there, bottom right hand corner of the video screen. That really helps out in keeping my channel going here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. That also helps. I'm trying to get to 100,000 so that I can actually get some money from the YouTube ad dollars. That would help a lot as well. If you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way to do that is with my complete training course. There's a link for that right down there in the description. And of course, check out my channel for hundreds more Photoshop Elements videos. And I'll see you next time.